Hey guys, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and excuse my throat, I've, you know, had a throat in, uh, congestion for the last couple days, so I might not sound uh, like I normally do, but hey, welcome back to movies that are long and very long month, and we go to a 2010 film, I know my friend hates this movie, a lot of people do, well, you know, some people that didn't get it, and I know why, and it's Christopher Nolan's film, no, this is not Dunkirk, his first movie of this decade. Inception. Yeah. I don't know if I reviewed this movie. If I did already, then this is a re-review, if, if anything. But this is a great freaking movie. I know it's not for everybody. This is a thinking man psychological thriller. It's not an action movie. They say spectacular action. It's not an action movie, though. I guarantee it. It's not. Now, I saw this in the theater back in 2010, and I was not exactly that old when it came out. Uh, my friend... It went about seven years ago, probably was like in his late teens. So this was probably definitely not uh, directed at people that were that young because they won't understand the concept of people going into each other's dreams and seeing all all of these vast imagery and all everything. I understood the film fine. I know it, it takes a lot of you know effort to put your mind to it, but it's a great premise. You know, Christopher Nolan sh shot the hell out of this movie. I think it's one of his best films of this decade. Now, let me read the back quick. Acclaimed filmmaker Christopher Nolan directs an international cast in this sci-fi actioneer, really a thriller, that travels around the globe and into the world of dreams, which is an interesting concept. Dom Cobb, DiCaprio, in a great performance, is the best there is at extraction, stealing valuable secrets inside the suspicious uh, subconscious during the mind's vulnerable dream state. His skill has made him a coveted player in industrial espionage, but has also made him a fugitive and cost him dearly. Now he may get a second chance if he can do the impossible, Inception, planting an idea rather than stealing one. Which, believe me, if Abrams had Inception, he would not be as successful today if he came up with his own ideas instead of stealing from others, but I'll get to that later. Um... If they succeed, Cobb and his team can pull off the perfect crime... But no planning or expertise can prepare them for a dangerous enemy who seems to predict their every move. An enemy only Cobb could have seen coming. I will say this. This movie has a hell of a cast. There's some people I don't like in the movie, but I'll get to that. Uh, DiCaprio is amazing in this movie. He should have won an Oscar for this before The Revenant. Because he doesn't do the voice like Chris, Christian Bale in The Dark Knight. And he has a great cast to work with. His acting is fantastic. You believe everything he says. He dresses accordingly, and, uh, you know, uh, Nolan knows how to sh how to direct this guy. He should have used him again in another movie. Uh, the rest of the cast, you got Ken Watanabe from Godzilla 2014, Transformers 4, a bunch of other stuff. Great actor. He was also in Batman Begins as uh, the fake Ra's al Ghul, I believe. And uh, you also got Joseph Gordon-Levitt, another actor that will work with Nolan in The Dark Knight Rises. A great actor. I remember him when he was a kid. In the 90s, in Third Rock from the Sun, and uh, Angels in the Outfield is a really good actor. He shines here. He has a really cool scene where they're where the room is like sp like tilting. It looks freaking fantastic. It goes upside down. It's amazing. This movie has a lot of great ideas. And yes, I know you don't have to tell me in the comments. This was taken from an idea from an anime, which is basically the same thing. The movie Paprika from like like the year 2000. It's this movie just with animated characters in Asia, but it, it it's the way you execute it that works. There's there's uh, adapting an idea, and then there's stealing. Winkity wink wink. Um, you also have um, Marion Cotillard. This is she's the French girl from The Dark Knight Rises. Good actress, but she's there to basically just so she can die. Spoiler alert. Yeah, she falls off a building, and DiCaprio's like no, and. She dies, just like in The Dark Knight Rises. So Nolan pretty much puts her in, a, in the films so she can die. Uh, you have Cillian Murphy. He's uh, the Scarecrow from the joke, from the from the Nolan trilogy. You have um, Tom Hardy. This is his best work I've seen in a long time. Because as Bane, he made me laugh my ass off. In a good way and a bad way. Because his voice just made me laugh. I didn't see Fury Road. I don't care about that. 
Um, I hated This Means War. Him and him and Chris Pine had better chemistry than they did with Reese Witherspoon. That was a shitty film. And uh, his Dunkirk, I don't know. I, that movie has no women, so I'd rather see this again than to see Dunkirk because I need women in a movie. If not, you know, I kind of get lose interest. Um, you have Tom Berenger. He was a good actor from back in the nineties. He did uh. Sniper, the Sniper films, I really enjoy watching him. He's a classically trained actor. I'm glad Nolan brought him back to, you know, be in a big movie again. Uh, Michael Caine, of course, he works with Nolan in almost all of his movies. Except, um, I think, Memento. I don't think Michael Caine's in that. But most of the Nolan's films, the Nolan trilogy of Batman films, this movie, Interstellar, and uh, what was another one? Uh, I, I, I don't know if he was in Insomnia, but yeah. Nolan knows how to use Michael Caine. He's brilliant in this movie. He's barely in it. He's like in 10, 15 minutes of the film. So don't expect too much from him. But there is someone in this cast that I do not give a shit about. You know who it is. Ellen Page. I'm sorry. Ever since she came out of the closet, I'm like, yeah, you don't appeal to me anymore, Ellen. Sorry. I'd rather see Mally and Cotillard because at least we know that she likes men. Because she's, I think she's married to one. And she's gorgeous. You, I have a bone to pick with you. Is her acting bad? No, but... Joseph Gordon-Levitt kisses her. I'm like, yeah, you wish that you were into that kiss, Ellen Page. I did not care about her in X-Men 3. Fuck her in that movie. Or Days of Future Past. Sorry, guys. She was one of the weak points of that film. Super, Jace, James Gunn, that is the worst actress that he casted in one of his movies that he did before Guardians of the Galaxy. Because she was so annoying and so unsexy. And she has this near-rape scene with, with freaking... Um, uh, what's his face? Um, damn it. Uh, what's his name? I forgot. Not Patrick Wilson. That's uh, that's another movie. But the meet late the main guy from Super. Yeah, she like dry humps him and he throws up. That would be the same way that I would feel if if the hobo was dry humping me. I would be like, Ugh! oh god, British British germs. Ugh! That would be me. She's not even American anyway. She's Canadian. One of the few Canadian actresses I don't care about. She's short, she's boring, Nolan can't make her look good, she's barely feminine in the movie. I'm, I'm like, DiCaprio is stealing every scene that he's with her. He's like, oh, you're in the background. When the scene where they're in the dream and the things are floating and the buildings are like tumbling down and going crazy. It's, a, it's, it's interesting. I know my friend says it's boring. I get it. This is a very long movie. This is 148 minutes, 2 hours and 28 minutes, and it's always about thinking. The score is great. Hans Zimmer's score is amazing. But yeah, fuck Ellen Page. She's the worst thing in the movie. Um, the, the the soundtrack, that French song when they're listening to headphones and they're like, dun, 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 I love that song. That song is amazing. It brings atmosphere. That's what films are missing today. That's why uh, this movie was a huge hit in the summer of 2010 and not uh, Detroit. Because you you had a great director with a, actor, a shitty actor from Star Wars that I don't care about. Yeah, that people, you pushed them too soon. DiCaprio has always been a good actor since he was a kid in the 90s. And his first movie was Critters 3. And then he got Oscar nominated. He got critically acclaimed films like this and, and freaking The Revenant. And uh, Wolf of Wall Street, but I won't watch that because of Margot Robbie. But anyway, this movie is amazing. If you have not seen it, I know, Sean, you don't have to say in the comments this movie's boring. I got it, okay? You said that in Battleship. I don't need to know anymore. If it's not for you, just say, it's not for me. End the story. Just leave it there. Don't say it's boring, it's boring, boring. People said that. They were expecting this to be like wall-to-wall -wall action.